Hi, Facebook. So, I'm here today to promote a book of my friends, Maddie Auburn. Okay, so this book has been copyrighted, so nobody can take any of the stuff and repeat it anywhere. So, let's get down to it, okay? Okay, the scent of wet earth and fresh foliage filled my nostrils as I prowled through the underbrush, invigorating my senses. My whiskers twitched as I brushed against the leaves, my keen eyes scanning the surroundings for any sign of movement. The vibrant sounds of the forest surrounded me, the tropical bird calls, the rustling of leaves in the wind, even the distant roar of a nearby waterfall seemed to rever reverberate throughout the forest, adding to its vivacious energy. Despite being surrounded by so much life, my own body felt heavy and sluggish, not eating for more than a day. My stomach grumbled, reminding me that I needed to hunt for prayer. Remember my younger sister, Solara, and how she looked up to me as a protector. I couldn't let her or anyone else back down. I need to find food quickly. A pause soon sat on the soft ground. My muscles coiled and ready for any unexpected movement. My senses were constantly high alert, scanning starting for any signs of movement. As I rounded a corner, I noticed a blur around for instance. My heart skipped the beast. I recognized the telltale signs of prey. I began to look, close the gap. By moving in, in closer and staying close to the ground. I started closing the distance and moving in closer and staying low to the ground. With its head buried in lush scenery, the deer was completely unaware of my presence. My appetite increased. I could almost taste its succulent meat in my mouth. Mm. The sounds of the forest broke my little growl as I was about to pounce. My ears filled back as I froze in place. My senses were in high alert as I searched for the source of the noise. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest as I scanned the area around me. My body was tense, ready to fight or flee at any moment. A pair of glowing in my eyes emerged from the underbrush, knocked on me. My first reaction was to flee. As far away from this feline as possible, but as I got closer, I realized this shit was unlike any other I had ever seen. It had thick white fur with black spots, and when it moved, its muscles rippled beneath its skin. I knew it was a man, someone powerful so for sure in his own right. His territorial scent was strong. I did find his predator from a distant and icy world. Despite my initial fear, I couldn't help but admire and respect the significant creatures. Aware that I was in the presence of a skilled hunter, not like me, but something about his presence made me nervous, as he was a threat to me and my pack. As the male shifter continued to stare me down, I couldn't help but feel unsettled. What was his reason for being in, this, in our territory that's so far from his own? My instincts warned me. That he is a threat. And I knew I needed to act quickly to protect my pack. I took a step forward, tensing the muscles in preparation for a fight. The male shape shifter remained motionless, his glowing eyes fixed on me. We cautiously circled each other, each with the other to make the first move. I lunged forward, claws bared and teeth flashing. The male shaped to move quickly, dodging out of the way and checking back with his own fierce swipe. We traded blows, each attempting to gain the upper hand. As I fought with all my might, I could feel adrenaline coursing through my veins. The male shaped shoes were skilled, but I was dead set on defending my pack at all costs. We kept fighting, neither of us gaining a clear advantage. As the fight progressed, I became aware of the effects of my hunger and exhaustion. My movements were slower, 
My bulls would have powered them before. The male shapeshifter seemed to sense their vulnerability and took advantage of it, landing a powerful blow that knocked me to the ground. Everything was locked for a split second as I struggled to regain my, my bearings. When I opened my eyes again, the male shapeshifter stood over me, claws bared, and ready to strike. I knew I was in trouble. This could be the end of my life, but then something strange happened. The male shapeshifter abruptly lowered his claws and took a step back. Gave me a long look before turning and walking into the brush. I couldn't help but wonder what had just happened as I was lay panting and exhausted on the ground. The male shapeshifter spared my life out of pity or honor, and he simply decided I was in worth the trouble. Whatever the reason, I was thankful to be alive and resolved to be more cautious in the nature. I knew from then on that our pack was safe, not safe, even in our own territory. I couldn't help but feel vulnerable and exposed as I struggled to, regain my, to maintain my feline form. My claws had grown into hands, and my own dark brown skin was not visible to all. I hated the predator, hoping to scare him and make him consider reconsider attacking me again. But I knew them for us, I was no match for him. My mind raced with thoughts of a pack and what they would think of me as if they knew about this encounter. So I lay there trying to catch my breath. I wasn't the alpha's daughter, nor was I protected to scare of skill of fire, just another member of the pack. Trying to find my place in a world felt too big and dangerous at times. I couldn't help but wonder what, the what this stranger was up to. Was he truly from the icy world? Or was it just a ruse taking my trust? Was he sent by our adversaries to gather information or cause harm? The possibilities were limitless, and each one increased my anxiety and fear. Vague's voice we heard calling out my name in distance, my closest friend and confidant, and I knew he'd come to my aid if he could. Was also that he was a long distance away and it would take him some time to reach me. I could couldn't help but feel like a failure as I lay there trying to get my breath and regain my strength. I put myself out there and risked my life. Now it's paying the price. I'd always struggled to findings of with feelings of inadequacy and self doubt. This encounter only exacerbated them. I was alone with my thoughts hunger, and pain as the creature from the icy world vanished from the forest. My body ached from the fight. And the wound inflicted on the shape so I tried to get up. I knew I needed to get back to a pack and pour what had happened. But the thought facing them was my failure and me want to curl up in a ball and disappear. I slowly rose from the ground, still wincing in pain. The blow to my side I took a Deep breath and focus on calming myself down, recalling techniques I had earned during my shapeshifter training. I tried to recall as many details in the strip up of the trainers as I could to regain my composure. Thick white fur with dark black spots, strong muscles, and a confident demeanor. All these characters would help me identify him if I ever ran into him again. Time being, my priority is to get back to my pack and report what had, what had happened. I attempted to speak, my voice was trembling and barely audible. I managed a small whimper in hopes that Varric would hear it and follow the sound. Then I noticed him. Varric's silhouettes appeared through the trees, sprinting toward me. He had, he appeared relieved to see me. Really changed his when he saw the seat I was in. Are you okay? What happened? He asked. Laying down beside me, I struggled to speak, but I managed to tell him everything that had happened. With the ice changer, Barry sat up straight, his eyes widening with each child's ride. When I was finished speaking, he wrapped his arm around me and then helped me to my feet. We have to get you back to the pack, he said emphatically. You're hurt and shouldn't be out here by yourself. My mind was racing with questions and fears to be opposed to tax territory. What would my father say if he learned of the count? Would he believe me or would he think I was making things up? I knew my, my father was other packs alpha, but didn't make the situation any less terrifying. Varric's father for you was, uh, was the alpha. It 
and he was known for his strict adherence to the rules and wavering discipline. Big notice of concern and placed a soothing hand on his shoulder. Don't worry, we're we'll going to have to get a father who will perform with everything. He will know what to do. His words gave me some solace, but I was so concerned about the future. I could feel the other pack members' eyes on me as we entered the pack's territory. News spreads quickly in the pack, and I knew the main guy was better. Had already been discussed intensely. I could feel the weight of my other judgment and scrutiny on me. I wish I could simply vanish. My father was waiting for us in the inch of Pac's den. His face on what's happened to you, he replied. He inquired, his voice concerned. I took a deep breath and began to recount the events of the previous few days, beginning the counter of the predator and ending the meeting of the shifter. The nasty world. My father listened intently, his face going more crystal with each passing moment. When I was finished, my father sighed deeply. This is grave, he said. We must immediately notify Thorian and begin taking precautions in to protect our pack. I nodded, relieved my father believed me and was at some behalf. We made our way together to the Alpha Stand where Beric's father was already waiting for us. I felt a sense of unity for us my back. Sat down and discussed the situation, the situation. We were all in this together with me. We could do everything we could do to protect our home and families. You know, I think that's good enough for right now. I was do five chapters, but that's good, right? That's really good. That's a good book. So come on, people. Give my friend some attention, okay? She worked her hardest on this book. Echoes the Fair Heart in the Shadow of Two Worlds by Maddie Auburn and Two Solace. Come on, people. I know you're good. Help me, okay? Please, please help.